we will take a look at a little UPAL demo. This example, the train gate, is provided with UPAL distribution. The setup is the following. We have a number of train tracks merging into one track that goes through the bridge. Therefore, only one train can cross the bridge at a time. There is a controller here in the yellow house communicating with the trains and managing the traffic. A train is in a safe zone before it starts approaching, like this one here. When a train is approaching, when it's in this area, it sends a notification with its ID, say 1, to the controller. And if there is another train, let's call it train 2, crossing the bridge at the same time, the controller sends a message back to the train 1 requesting it to stop. We know how brakes work in trains, so it takes a while for the train to stop. Thus, if a message from the controller arrives after this point, the train will not be able to stop in time. But let's first assume the message arrived in time. The train stops and waits for another message allowing it to cross the bridge. The control tower will send this message once the track is clear. The train will start moving and take some time to get to a reasonable speed. Then it will cross the bridge and once it's done, it will report back with its ID to the controller and move to a safe state. Now going back to the situation where an approaching train passed the 10 minutes units mark and did not receive the stop signal from the controller, in this case it will proceed to cross the bridge. This is the setup in a nutshell. Now, if we look at this diagram on the right, it represents the behavior of a train. We begin with a safe state where the train has not started approaching yet. When it is approaching, it sends a signal to the controller represented by this upper ID exclamation mark. The exclamation mark stands for an outgoing message, an ID for the ID of the train. With this transition, we also reset the timer to, to zero, so x equals zero. Here we have an example of timed automata and we'll keep track of time for various reasons. For instance, a train can stay in some states only for a certain amount of time and it needs to move to another state, as we will see now. Okay, now we move to a new state and stay here as long as x is less or equal 20. If x is less or equal 10, the controller can still send a stop message and the train will move to a stop state. This condition, we call it a guard, says that we can only make this transition if the condition holds. Alternatively, if x is greater or equal 10, then we can reset the timer to zero and move to cross state. This is because we cannot stop after 10 units, 10 time units. But let's go back to stop state. The train that is in this state is waiting for a controller to allow it to cross the bridge. Once the track is clear, the controller sends a message together with the ID of the train and the question mark. The question mark here stands for incoming messages, incoming message to the train from the controller. The timer is reset again and the train transitions to the start state. This is because it takes a while for the train to restart and get to a reasonable speed. Now here again, we have an invariant, just like in the upper state before, telling us that one can only stay in, stay in this state for no longer than 15 time units. If x is greater or equal 7, then we can transition to the cross state whilst resetting the timer again. The environment invariant in the cross state says that a train can stay in it for no longer than five time units. If x is greater or equal three, then the train can send a message back to the controller informing that it is leaving the crossing and then move to the safe state. 
Here you can see the graph for the train, which corresponds to the graph that we've seen in the image. Now let's switch to the graph for the gate. It has only three states. We begin with a free state from which, depending on the conditions, a train is either allowed to go or is in queued. The state then changes to occupied, and if at this point another train arrives and informs the controller about its approaching, then it is in queued, and after transition to transition into C state, the controller sends a stop message to it and goes back to the occupied state. Moreover, from occupied state, we can move back to free state. In this case, the train that crossed the bridge sends the leave message back to the controller and is decued from the queue. Here, if we look at declarations, we have in queue and dequeue defined. And in declarations for the train, we define clock, which is our X, our ticker timer. And in the main declarations, we define the number of trains that we want to consider in our model, and also the messages that trains and control exchange, like upper, go, stop, and so on. Let's have a look at the simulator now. Here we have separate graphs for each of our six trains that we have. They are all the same. And then the graph for the gate. It's all included together. So what we can do in a simulator, we can, for example, say, OK, train three is approaching. Here's train three. I click next. So the state of it changes to approaching. The state of the gate changes to occupied. Uh, the next command is that train 4 is approaching. When a train 4 is approaching, the state of the gate, the, the train 4 is also moved to approaching, the state of the gate moved to C. The next thing that uh, the gate needs to do is to tell train 4 to stop. So it does, it moves to the so stop state. And now, for instance, we can say, well, train three can cross. It didn't get any signal to stop from the gate. It went to the cross state. And for instance, uh, now it's crossed and it leaves. So we do that. The gate changes to the free state. And the the train 4 moves from the stop state to the start state and moves to the front of, of the queue. Uh, it, it was the state, it was the train in front of the queue, so it goes, it's allowed to go. And the gate is in the occupied state. And we can keep on going, keep on going. If I uh, do an auto, you can see that um, states are changing. If I look, if I scroll up, Different trains are moving, different positions. The gate is switching states. And if I scroll up here, we can also see it in a, a different view of this. So you can try, try this out yourself, if you want, of course. An important thing that I want to note here is that if you look at the train and the gate, you can see how these signals go in parallel. So this is messages. So if you if a train is sending approaching with its number, train three, here we have the same approaching. This is where it would be, or here. Where we have a stop with a number that's with a question mark here, because that's the train receives this message. Here it's with exclamation mark because the gate sends it. The same with leave. Leave here has a question mark because that's something that the gate receives from the train, but here leave has the exclamation mark because it's what the train sends to the gate. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show is the verifier. And the verifier allows us to verify various properties of our system. So for instance, we have a property here 
the property says that gate can receive and store in queue messages from approaching trains. We can click check here. It does the check. Property is satisfied. We are happy here. Okay, for instance, maybe um, this one, train one can reach uh, crossing. We can check if this property holds. Yes, property, set, pro property is satisfied. Now, a little bit more complicated one. For instance, there is never more than one train crossing the bridge at any time instance. Let's check. And hooray, the property is satisfied as well. So this is all great. And it's really nice to check this little model with our six trains. But what if we go to the editor and go to declarations and say we want 60 trains. And then I go back to verifier. Uh, can I verify that the gay can receive messages from approaching trains? Okay. Yes, the property is satisfied. But what if I do this? Then the pain begins. So as you can see, this has taken some time and this will not stop because the amount of trains that the number of trains that we're using is way too large for this to finish before this demo finishes. And what we have to keep in mind with systems like that, that we can always try and test our small models, but when it comes to bigger models, it can get very complicated and these systems cannot necessarily um, give you the answer to everything. So I hope you enjoyed the demo.